Being holistically healthy is expensive. It costs money to get organic over just regular fruits and vegetables. It costs money to go to the gym and work out. It costs money to go to get massages, acupuncture, all these variety of choices that we have to be healthy. It does cost sometimes a little bit of money, sometimes quite a bit of money to be holistically healthy, to take care of yourself in, in very preventative ways. However, it also costs a lot to be ill. Even in other countries where they may pay for the insurance and it's free in a sense the government pays for it, you have to wait a long time to before you can have your surgery. And some countries, if you reach a certain age, they won't even allow you to have it unless you pay for it yourself. And here in the U.S., we have what's called co-payments, and they, they go up and up and up as, in order to keep costs down. And so even though, yes, it pays for part of it, you still have to pay the co-payments. Because recently I had myself, it was a minor surgery, but the co-payments were like staggering because <laughs> it was a way to keep our expenses down. But we had to pay these co-payments. It wasn't a big deal, but it was a big deal in the expense part. So I think what's important is to say, yes, it's going to cost me money to get these fruits and vegetables organic over regular, or even eating fruits and vegetables over maybe something else that isn't as healthy for you. Because often the cheapest food isn't the healthiest. And same way, you may have to spend a little bit more to get more healthy deodorants and clothing, things that are just good for you, that are keep you healthy, keep you fit, keep you from getting um, toxins in your body. And though that costs money, and it even costs your time, like exercising costs time, working out, doing things that take care of your body, of course they do talk, take your time and energy. But not doing that has a lot of cost to it too. So it kind of, it's like a balance here. On this side, there's all these preventative things you can do, holistically healthy things you can do that are very good for you and make you feel good. And you have, after you have the disease, all the things you have to do. I mean, pharmaceutical companies, when they, you know, they give you pills that will help you and they're, they're good about that, but because they spend a lot of money researching that and finding out the cure for that disease, they have to pass that price tag on to you. So they're very expensive. It can be hundreds of dollars for your monthly medical pills that you have to take to be well. So what's better, I believe, is prevention. And this show is all about prevention, how you can be healthy today and stay healthy and fit in very natural ways that don't have side effects, that keep you staying well. And taking that time to be well has so many benefits to it. You get healthier, you stay healthy, and as you age, as we all age, there will be knocks and bumps and bruises, but they're far less and they're not as pervasive. So even if there isn't the medical expense to it, let's say money doesn't matter to you, or you have enough money, you don't worry about that. Then you have to deal with the physical effects of illness. They're hard on you. They take away from your joie de vie, your joy of life. And if you take the time to eat right, to exercise, the things you so often hear on this show, to um, rest, to all these preventative things you can do, getting a massage, massage costs money but it's very good for you. We're gonna have an expert on and talking about that and we'll have people talking about all these different things that you can do to prevent yourself to be, or to keep yourself healthy. And yes, it does cost money and it often costs a little bit more money than it is one to do nothing, like getting a massage, not getting a massage, you know, getting a massage costs money, but also just eating, getting an organic apple. I get organic apples and oranges and fruits and vegetables. It costs me a little bit money for that, but the benefits I get from that and that we can get from that, I believe, and hopefully you can share with your thoughts on this too, we believe that it can really be worth that investment. So invest in yourself, invest in your health, and be well. Peace. Our first question this week is from Grace in the Philippines. I'm a single parent who works full time and has two kids. My 13 year old daughter is still in the third grade due to learning disabilities and behavioral problems. Most of the time I'm very tired and don't give them the attention they desire. I'm trying my best to handle the situation but I'm feeling frustrated, exhausted, and overwhelmed. What can I do to help my kids and my situation? Grace, there's many things you can do to improve what's happening in your life right now. Let me give you some ideas. One would be ask for help. I hope you have people in your life that could say, you know, we love you, Grace, and we know it's very difficult. So if you have family members or friends saying, Grace, we can watch the kids at this time. We can give you a break here. Take their help. Let them help you. Let them love you. And then when they give you that time, 
go do things for yourself. Do things that fill yourself back up because the reality is that your situation is very difficult. Single parenting, I believe, is one of the most challenging jobs on the planet. So how we handle challenging jobs very well is by self-care. And there's only so much you're going to get. So when you get that self-care, don't go run errands, don't clean up, don't do chores. Do things that fill yourself back up. And then the second thing I think you can do is, I love meditation. I think meditation, 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes a day, has an incredible way of rejuvenating and filling your cup back up. So listen to our podcast about meditation. It's free. And learn to meditate, because I really think it's one of the best ways to fill yourself up when you're feeling empty. And Grace, I know that your daughter is struggling. She's behind academically because of behavioral and learning disabilities. And what we have found a lot of times in children, the behavioral stuff that comes out from them sometimes has a lot to do with what's going on at home. So if you're not having a lot of time to spend with your daughter or you're really frustrated because you're working so much, that's kind of something to look at as well. And I know it's hard at the end of the day to come and play with your daughter, but there's a lot to learn from your daughter. Kids are pretty amazing and pretty resilient because they're able to get out their stresses through their play. Remember what it was like to be a kid and you have, you know, you're upset about something and you go out and you play and you're ah screaming or you get out that energy and it feels really good. And you know, if you were to do something like that with your daughter and play games with her and have fun with her, that's going to lift you up as well. And I also agree with Dr. Puff in regards to making sure you have some downtime for yourself. So if some family members or friends might be able to help you out by watching your kids or doing something like that, don't just use that time to clean or run errands. That's really important. Take that time to take care of you. Take a hot bath or a hot shower. Maybe go for a walk. And by the way, exercise is a great thing that you can also share with your daughter too. And Grace, the message that we're both giving you is love Grace, take care of Grace, and love your daughter. Mm -hmm. You can do both and, but love Grace. Grace, I think, needs some affection, needs some time for herself. Give yourself that, and that will help you love your daughter better. Thank you so much for your question, and we wish you all the best.